What'd you guys, how'd you guys feel about the show last night? Felt good. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Felt real cool. Um, you, I noticed you guys have, uh, have been playing with a, a diverse group of musicians. You, I, I noticed you opened for Bob Dylan, and you're going to open for Foo Fighters, and you're going to play Bonnaroo. Is that like a conscious decision of you guys to try to, you know, keep it diverse, whether it is, you know, to attract a diverse people to listen to your music or to keep things interesting when you're out playing, or, or is it just something that, that just sort of happened? I think it's definitely intentional. We, we want to, our biggest thing is variety. We, we like variety in the music that we play and the music that we listen to and the people that we get to play with. And we've, we've been lucky enough to get to open up for some great people and go out with some really great bands, so we like to you know, mix it up from the from whatever styles we can we can go to. Where do some of your influences come from? I mean, do you guys have a diverse listening? I'd say it's pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. To the point where we really don't play that many CDs in the van. Everybody has their own separate units of, you know, just Walkmans and Discmans and things like that. I think we all have the same core, sure. same cylinder that we all can come back to that, that really makes the foundation that we have, but then everybody kind of branches off on their own little... Yeah, I guess like one of those stables would be like, I don't know, like after a dinner or something like that, where there's only like an hour left to drive, ACDC or something like that, it gets the whole van hands in the air and singing. John Prine kind of gets everybody yeah. gathered around the stereo. Leonard Cohen's been doing that too a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what else. Zeppelin is always an obvious choice. And uh, the Beatles, the classic. Cookie Monster. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of Rolf, I think. Did you guys get that Zeppelin DVD that just came out? Yeah, just got that again. I haven't seen it yet. Um, it, we don't have a DVD player, but yeah. we've already marked our calendars. Yeah, that. we're sitting up with holiday. We can <laughs> lock the door and, <laughs> and study for a little while. Is there anything about um, you know? Cause is there anything about the music industry now that you're you're getting to play in bigger places and and see you know see things? Is there anything that that has surprised you guys or that that what you know you didn't expect? about the music industry or about, you know, promoting your music or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there's lots, I think the thing that most surprises me is there's so much that's not in your control. I mean, uh, there's so much that, because I think we just kind of like to play music and we get together and play it and we don't like to think about it, we don't like to analyze it, and then, you know, it always gets analyzed. I think that's the one thing that adults really like to do is, like, analyze things and, I don't know, I, I just kind of think that we kind of like to look at it from a childlike perspective, you know, just playing and having fun. And, and I think as, as people get older and older, they have more and more need to find a point of reference. Or yeah, something like pigeonhole stuff and find some reference point for stuff. And that, that just kind of gets frustrating. So. Uh, I, I was looking through pictures uh, on your website before the show, and, and one of the things I noticed you know, it's like seems like you guys are all over the place. I'm like, wow, these guys are really gonna rock, you know. But like a lot of the songs in the CDs, they sound really gentle and kind of sweet, you know. Do you, is that something that you try to do? Is is make that separation between your live music and the studio music, or now that we're road hardened and we're not gentle and sweet anymore? <laughs> just, no, I think it just happened that way. We just you know, we'd make the record and then once we got to live atmosphere, it just felt like it, it you know, it was a different animal and it felt like the crowd needed something different out of it. So it just kind of evolved, I think, maybe, if I could say that. I guess that and like the fact that, I mean, I don't know about you gentlemen, but I don't like going to see a band that I've been wanting to see live for a while and they play the CD live, you know? There's always, a, a nice feeling when you go to a live performance and it's a live performance. It's not like a carbon copy of the CD. So I, I don't know. It's just always been a goal. Plus I think there's, when you make a record, it, it lasts forever. And regardless of whether we're around for two more days or 20 more years, the, the record will be there forever. So we like to put everything into the record, you know, that, that needs to be there. But, but when we play live, it's like, you know, we don't, he doesn't have four arms, I don't have five mouths, and you know, he doesn't have 
twenty finger. I mean, there's there's only so many things you can do. That I mean, we like to keep it in the cool. same realm, but at the same time, when we play live, it's like you've been riding the van all day, and you're you know you're ready to get out and have fun. You know, just just take it take it to different place. Has your approach to recording music changed at all? Studio recording. Mm -hmm. So that probably changes with everybody, just kind of learn more stuff and build on and get more ideas. That's just with anything. Yeah, it's like it has in a way, but it hasn't in another way. I mean, I think we've matured and grown up, but at the same time, I think we've still got the same kind of principle, the way we do it, I think, that I hope we'll always have, because if not, I think we'll end up making, you know, no telling what kind of records in another 20 years. <laughs> yeah, bad records. <laughs> what do you What do you guys think about now going and playing stadiums? Is it an anxious thing, or like, what What are your thoughts about? We We don't like to really think about. It. We just kind of yeah. get in and we just kind of like close our eyes and let it let it go. And sometimes, if it's a great show, you can't really tell where you are and you can't tell if there's five people or two thousand people. That's the greatest shows for me don't really exist. They just kind of happen a big thing. And then they're over and you're in the dressing room. Like that was a great show. <laughs> I'm I'm excited but I, I gotta admit deep down I'm a little bit I maybe not intimidated, but it just I guess I, I'm already thinking about it. I just feel like I'm a fish out of water and, and that environment just seems really like it's cool, but it's just like I can't imagine like, cause last night it's just to me that it, just the most perfect scenario. It sounded great. You can like barely see the person in the very back of the room, and it's just it feels so good. And it's going to be a strange to adapt to this uh, environment. But I mean, we'll do fine. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll get back to you on that. Sorry about that. That's what I was going to say. Was last night was so intimate. I mean, you guys were just like right there, and everybody got a chance to talk to you or anything. I didn't know if. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. It's like. I don't know. I mean, like you said, I don't know. I don't really like to think about that stuff too much. But the one thing I do love about playing clubs and smaller venues is the intimacy and the ability to like, go out and talk to people afterwards. And I don't know. Just let them know that we're like just normal guys. We just have to go out there and have a good time. What do you guys think of Austin? I gotta ask that question. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, yeah. It's our second home. Yeah. I was like a dork when I would play here because I'm like, you guys are so great. We love playing Austin so much because we just really do. It's such an awesome place. There's so many fun things to do. We th we thought we'd seen it all until we went to Barton Springs yesterday. A couple of months. That was really cool. Almost didn't leave. So many great things. Can't even begin to number the toy joy, toy joy, barbecue. It's all here. Well, it's cool. We went and saw um, Modest Mouse up in Louisville, and it seems like Louisville kind of has like an Austin feel to it. Exactly. But, That's why we love it. Yeah. So much. My friend was saying it seems like Louisville is kind of like the way Austin was 10 years ago before it got big. Do you say that's fairly? That's a common description we use. I don't know about Austin's rise and fall of stardom, but, but Austin seems like a slightly bigger Louisville with slightly more things to do. That's kind of like, that's kind of how it was described to me before I was even here. It was just kind of like, wow, Austin, Texas. I would think the mentality is also maybe a little bit different here. And I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to go too far into that, but I would just think that the culture is somehow different a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just because this is such a college town, and Louisville seems more, not conservative maybe is too strong a word, but just... The university is not the base. Yeah. Of the, of the town. It's, I think Lula's a little more, I don't know, there's not a lot of people going way out on, on a limb there doing wild and crazy stuff, you know, it's just kind of like everybody's just doing their thing, you know. Uh, it, I like those shirts that say, keep Austin weird. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you come down here, you're like, this is weird, but it's not weird in like a bad way or even like a strange way. It's just everybody's just kind of doing their own thing and doing what they want to do. And it's like they're holding on to that weirdness. You yeah, know? They yeah, like they're like fighting. They're like, you gotta hold on to it. It's, it's awesome. Well, what do you guys miss about Louisville being on the road? My bed. <laughs> My personal bed. Yeah. The greenery. 
Definitely. While I'm driving to the uh, southwest, I definitely missed some greenery. So Austin was a, a nice sight. Oh man, what do you all think? The greenery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got plenty. You can of that. edit that. <laughs> yeah, you can edit. Yeah, that. Edit. I mean, <laughs> not, not the trees. Yeah,